activism of the 60s, uh, and here we're speaking mostly of the late 60s, not the civil rights movement, uh, d did have a lasting effect in just generally civilizing the society. So uh, women's rights, uh, gay rights, environmental concerns, uh, opposition to aggression, uh, lots of things have changed. Now you are dealing with a super concentrated, high level industrial state that has all kinds of uh, ways of spying and sabotaging you, but still the basic communication, person to person, the problems of bad housing, the problems of bad health, the problems of police violence, the problems of social injustice, they may have a different form, but they're not different problems. I would say to, to young people that are starting off, and if they've got beliefs about climate change or horrors of what the refugees are going through, they should make work about that. Get out on the streets, organize yourselves well. There's no need for violence. Just to get up off your ass and get out there and join whatever campaigning is, because you then learn, well, why am I doing this? And then you'll meet other people who go, you're a complete wanker. You know, I, I believe X, Y, and Z, you believe ABC, you know, then you've got to argue your point. Well, this is why I believe ABC. Now you just whip off a tweet or an email and you can mobilize mass movements. But what I divine with some of that is sometimes it needs to throw up a very quick movement around an issue. But it's difficult to sustain it. It's really important for successful activism that activists don't just talk to each other. The really important key to activist success is talking to the wider public. If you truly believe that your message is a message for, the, for everybody, it's about making life better for everybody, then if you find the right way to put that message out, it will connect with the people who you're trying to speak to. No government initiates change because they've maintained the status quo. They've got into power, so they're about to, you know. They're... But it's only by the actions of ordinary people all through the centuries, really, that have initiate that beginning of change. And this notion of forming coalitions was part of how we were doing our community organizing and our political organizing, because all of these are grassroots organizations without, without a lot of money, without a lot of budget, but have a tremendous, what do you call it, a tremendous communal support because they're actually talking about the needs of people who are kind of left out of the political system. Activity can be, can be frightening, can be difficult. I've been scared out of my wits many, many times. Whether it works, whether it's bad times or good times, that accumulation of activity gives you such an amazing knowledge about what's possible and what isn't against the odds. Because you're pretty much always against the odds, aren't you? Backlash was actually quite personal. The concept of radicalization assumes a passive subject being influenced by evil. I think most people who become involved in politics radicalize themselves. They, they become radical because, of, because the world is changing and because they want to be part of it. We have to assume that every critic and every opponent is a potential friend and ally. The fact that we were well known for backing up our claims with eyewitnesses, research, statistics, that immediately got us taken much more seriously than an earlier generation of LGBT groups. So you still have to band together, have a commitment, challenge the authorities, risk your life, and put everything on the line to make the world better. There's no single answer for everyone. No single, this is the way to do it for everyone. It depends who you are, what your circumstances are, what your concerns are, uh, uh, where your engagements are. Uh, but uh, the opportunities are enormous. And each individual just has to answer that question. How am I going to use the opportunities available to me to deal with the critical problems of the world.